Fish what? Stand in line. White water. Yeah. And D and D. Through the barren streets of Lexington, the echoes of children's voices can be heard bouncing off the empty storefronts. It's a rather peaceful Friday morning, and unsurprisingly, their favorite day of the week. Not because they're hours away from the weekend playtime, but because Fridays mean they get to attend Miss Heidi Frazier's story time. So, hey kids, how are you doing today? Good. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? I work a lot with the, the day school here, and I can't compete with those tablets. We, I mean, we try, and I say we, anybody in the field, libraries, bookstores, we can't. There's something about those that is so compelling, but maybe it'll plant a seed. Maybe it'll plant a seed. How do, how do we find out? We're going to turn the page. We're going to turn the page. So he went on looking for a home. As Heidi flips through this week's book, Home for a Bunny, these tiny tots can hardly contain their excitement, mainly because each turning page brings them one moment closer to their favorite Friday tradition, walking across the street hand in hand to discover a new adventurous world in Heidi's bookstore, 40 Acre Wood, all for free. Ready to get your free book? Yeah! I'm going to show you where it is. So one of the things I noticed, uh, I always give free books to children. Every child that comes into the store gets a free book. And I have every single time, I had one child say, well, what if I come in through the door and I get a free book and I go out and I come right back in? And I said, well, I guess you get two books. I heard that after the kids came in, did story time, they all had their book. And they were all outside just yes, reading. I love it. I usually take lots of pictures, what's fabulous. Um, a lot of times we do it in here. I haven't done it in here in a while. They sit down and read. Many of them can't read yet, but it doesn't matter. They're looking at the pictures, which is fine. That's the beginning. And they'll make up a story. Uh, even if they don't, even if they're just, depending on their age, even if they're just engrossed in the pictures, who cares? They're having that experience with the book. And one will sit down and read, and then another one, and then another one, and then they're all, they're all sitting there. What I like to see is when they're older and they come back in and they remember, and they'll come and they'll pick out a book or maybe a comic book or something like that. So there's still this connection. I just want to plant that seed. If nothing else, just plant that seed. So after you read this book, you have to come back or I'll come to school and you have to tell me if it's any good. Okay. If you like it, okay? Okay. okay. We're good? Okay. Bye. All right, how about you kids? Do you have a book picked out? I do. Which one are you going to get? In a town with no library, Heidi Frazier planted her dreams in a bright pink brick building to make reading accessible to all, no matter how big or small. No, this one, 47. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And I'd heard that before, but that is a very, very powerful lesson, which kind of goes with, you know, what's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing twice and expecting different results, which I so when she's not hosting reading time for the local daycare or leading the town's book club meeting, you can usually find Heidi behind the counter, where she often turns from bookseller into barterer, trading her books for smiles instead of coins. Got it, and I'm gonna put this one on the shelf for you. Okay, yeah. Just in case. Yeah, if you could. I won't, I won't say no to anybody. If somebody comes in and needs a book or wants a book and they don't have the money, I've been, I give away more, I, I give away, <laughs> give away so much, or I discount things. I mean, honestly, people could just say, that's too much for me, and I'm like, okay, I'll make it work. Especially children, I'll make it work. Tell me how much is in your wallet, I will make it work. I'm, I'm going to get one for me, Willow, and my dad. Is, oh, you want to get books for your family? Mm -hmm. That's fine. I just okay. want to get one bowl. Let me see this book you picked out. Wait, see how you're putting it in backwards? We're going to turn it around. Inspired by the 100-acre wood forest where Winnie the Pooh resides, Heidi has created the hub of hope for a library-less Lexington. And like the author, A.A. A. Milne, she is on a mission to rewrite the future of literature and inspire children to continue reading throughout each chapter of their lives. What does it do for you when you see these little ones come in? What does that do for you? Joy. Not because I did this, but because it, it makes their future brighter and fuller, richer. How so? 
well, it broadens their landscape and their horizons and their experiences. And especially in a small town, I've known children when they've become adults that have never left their zip code. And you know what? That may be of no fault or choice of their own. So travel through books, meet people through books, learn languages through books. In fact, it was a very wise person. My mother once said to me, you can learn anything through reading a book, even math. So books are the answer. They're the key. They're our future. They're everything. Are you ready to get a book? Yeah. All right, go pick any book there you want. I like this. I like this one. Hmm. No, not there, over here. I like this one. In a weathered storefront with decades of wear and tear lies humanity's past, present, and future. You can have any book you want. Like? Like any one. Where one woman has inspired people to not only spend the day exploring fictional worlds, but immersing themselves in their own. Heidi Frazier never thought that her time spent rescuing books and selling them for less than the price of a cup of coffee would become a successful business model. It's $3.25. But it's the support of her community hey, and her love of books that allows her to keep this giving tree open in a remote Texas town. Is there ever a day that you go, eh, books? Never. Never. Not one day. Once I'm here, I don't want to leave. It's that important to you? It's just fun. It's fun. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. When a, when a donation comes in, it's like Christmas. It's my love, as a, these are all books, but my real love is children and connecting children with books. So I rescue them. I rescued all these great children's books. I also know that fellow homeschoolers are struggling, and I want them. And, and through these 11 years that I've been doing this, I tell people, okay, oh, this is my favorite part of having a bookstore, but the truth is it's all my favorite part. There isn't a day I don't want to be here. Yeah, and this, this job doesn't support me. It never has supported me. It's just a love of itself, um, but there isn't a day that I don't want to be here. It's like Christmas every it's day. It's like Christmas every day. <laughs> Looking for more stories like this one? Just hit the subscribe button for more great stories about Texas and Texans.